If I had to learn to code from scratch today, I wouldn't do it the same way I did back in 2012. Back then, there were fewer tools, fewer distractions, and somehow, way less bad advice. But in 2025, there's an overwhelming amount of content. Every day there's a new framework, a new course, a new must learn thing. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I would learn to code today if I were starting from zero. What I would focus on, what I would skip, and what actually matters if you want to learn faster, avoid burnout, and maybe even, hopefully, enjoy the process. Start with real projects, not just courses. I know. Courses feel safe. They are structured, polished, you always feel like you're making progress, but here's the truth. Tutorials are comfort food. Projects are the gym. You don't learn how to think like a developer by copying someone else's to-do list in VS Code. You learn by hitting a wall, googling your way out, and hitting another wall. That's exactly where the growth happens. If I were starting over, I would build my first project after a single week of learning. It would break, it would suck, and it would definitely teach me more than any JavaScript mastery in several hours video ever could. If you want to learn faster, don't just follow code, follow your curiosity and build something real. Choose one language and stick with it. If I had a dollar for every time I heard, should I learn Python or JavaScript or Rust or Go or wait, maybe TypeScript, I would retire from tech and open a croissant truck in Lisbon. That's the life. I wasted months jumping from Python to JavaScript to Swift and ended up with 10 half-started tutorials and no idea how to build anything. Here's what I would tell the 2025 me. Pick one language and don't look at anything else for six months. Six months. Seriously, stop researching, just commit. And no, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. JavaScript is great, so is Python. The key isn't which one you pick, it's that you stop switching every time a new YouTuber makes a roadmap. Because the longer you spend debating the language, the longer you're not learning the real skill. How to think, like, and develop. If I were starting today, I would pick JavaScript because you can use it for websites, applications, backend, and even AI tools. But the truth, almost any language will work as long as you stick with it. Your first job won't be about fancy code, it will be about solving problems. I used to think real developers wrote code that looked like it belonged to a sci-fi movie. Elegant, clever, maybe even poetic. But here's what I've learned. No one cares how smart your code looks. They care whether you can solve the actual problem or not. Your first job won't ask you to reinvent React. They will ask this. Can you figure out why this button isn't working? Can you make this page load faster? Can you talk through your thinking without panicking? It's not about wizard level syntax. It's about clarity and communication. So if I were starting over, I would stop chasing code that looks impressive and start writing code that actually helps people. Companies don't hire you to be clever. They hire you to be useful. By the way, if this is helping, drop a like. It helps more than you think. AI can help you, but it cannot learn for you. AI tools like ChatGPT are incredible. They can explain code, write snippets, even help you debug. But here's the trap. If you treat AI like a shortcut, you will skip the part where you actually learn. I've seen beginners paste problems into an AI, get a perfect solution, and walk away like they got it. But when they hit a real bug next time, they freeze. Why? Because they never understood what the code was doing in the first place. So here's how I would use AI if I were starting today. Use it like a mentor, ask why, not just what, get explanations, compare approaches, use it to learn, not avoid thinking. The goal here isn't to be a human stack overflow. It's to build your own mental model so you can use tools wisely. Because in the end, AI is powerful but it can't give you experience. You still have to earn that. And while AI is changing the game, the real game is consistency. And that's why I created this playlist. Forget the tech stack, focus on habits. If you're learning to code in 2025, you've probably seen 1000 versions of this. Learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, TypeScript, Next.js, Tailwind, Docker, GraphQL, PostgreSQL, Astro, AI, Vite. Take a breath and close the tab. Because here's the truth, you really don't need a 12-step tech stack. You need a two-step habit. Step one, show up consistently. Step two, build things you care about. That's it. The people who get good aren't the ones who choose the right stack. They are the ones who kept coding when it got confusing, frustrating, 
or boring, which at some point it will. If I were starting today, I would stop obsessing over what to learn and build a routine that makes learning automatic because the stack will change, but your habits will carry you through every version of the web. If this is already hitting home, keep watching. The next tip might be the one that unlocks it for you. Your code won't look like the tutorial and that's okay. There's this moment every beginner hits. You follow a tutorial, you feel confident. Then you try to build your own version and it all falls apart. That moment sucks. Variables everywhere. You forgot how for loops works. Now you're crying into your terminal, wondering if you're cut out for this. Let me say this clearly. If your code doesn't look like the tutorial, that means you're actually learning. Copying teaches you where the keys are. Building your own thing teaches you how to think. So yeah, your code might be messier. You will Google the same thing 6,000 times, but that's not failure. That's real progress. Tutorials are training wheels. Falling over is how you learn to write, right? Confidence comes from building things that work. If I could bottle up one thing for every new dev, it would be this. Confidence doesn't come from reading more or watching more or planning more. It comes from shipping something no matter how small. Your first project doesn't need to be a SaaS app with Stripe, Tailwind and Dark Mode. It could be a simple calculator, a notes app, even a single page that doesn't crash every time. What matters is that you built it. You solved real problems. You made decisions on your own and you got it working. That's what builds belief. If I were starting again, I would stop waiting to feel ready and I would start building tiny things and watch my confidence grow with every push to GitHub. You don't get confidence first, you earn it by building things that work. You don't need another roadmap, you need a reason to keep going. You're not behind, you're just comparing too much. When you scroll X or YouTube and see 19 year olds building SaaS apps, launching startups and tweeting their day 100 progress, it's easy to think I'm too old, I'm too late, I will never catch up. But here's the truth. You're not behind, you're just comparing your beginning to someone else's middle. We all learn at different speeds. We all started from different places. And no one posts their late nights full of doubt and broken code, believe me. If I were starting over, I would stop refreshing Twitter and start asking, did I show up today? Did I learn one thing? That's how you measure progress. You're not late. You're learning and that's exactly where you're supposed to be. So yeah, if I had to start from scratch in 2025, I would keep it simple, very simple. I would keep it real, very real. And I would stop trying to learn everything and focus on learning what actually matters. You don't need a perfect plan. You just need a plan that gets you moving. Now, let me know in the comments below which one of these points hit you the hardest, because I would love to know. Now, give this video a like, subscribe, and close YouTube and go build something, you legend. Thanks for watching, I'm Pete, and I'll see you on the next one.